All right, welcome back, everybody. It's a new day. It's been a couple of days at least. And I just want to kind of show you what I've done here. Um, I've attached, sorry about the contrast again, this background is just so bright. But uh, I've attached very quickly as possible and cheaply as possible with recycled <laughs> plastic parts. I usually cut the corners off one of the brackets that didn't quite fit right. Just glued stuff together. This is actually another piece for the magnet holder that I just cut in half. Actually, Richard cut in half. Hi, Richard! Hey, Russ! Richard is here helping. He came for another visit, so freaking awesome. So we, um, we did a few things here that I didn't film, so I wanted to briefly talk about it. We put the encoder wheel on here. All right, we stuck it on here. This is the photo eye bracket that we uh, printed out and tried to get it to run. And the program being not finished and my, um, my actually, the fiber eye pickup, this little piece, it won't read it at a certain RPM. Um, that doesn't read super high speed. And so I need to just do an alternative means of, of measuring using a different means. But the point is, is that this thing would kick and do funny stuff and there's not enough momentum, not enough mass, inertia I should say, uh, in the particular system that we got here. So adding a, a, a weight here would be beneficial. So anyway, we tried that. I just, you know, we wanted to see what would happen. Um, we also left this on the big magnet and put it side by side and just let it run over here and this magnet interacting with that magnet, the big one that's not here right now. And that actually ran like that, but I didn't film it. We were just doing stuff. Maybe I'll set it back up and show you. But we decided to go ahead and put the mechanical commutator on here to give it the best possible chance we could um, because there's not enough. The, the interaction between this coil and this magnet is not quite what you want to run in a system like this where the magnet kicks real fast and it also tries to slow itself down because the, resist the resistance of the battery which I'll explain another time um, and demonstrate that to you the effects that we have here so anyway we put the mechanical back on here and we're gonna kinda just see if we can get it operating in this mode of operation and play around with that and I thought I would film it real quick while I had the opportunity so I'll show you when we get it running or if we don't get it running or whatever that happens um, really this commutator is pretty pretty beat up we did a lot of stuff to it so I'm gonna I'm gonna try using these two sections which aren't modified yet to get the uh, to get the commutator timed right so that we can actually get it to kick around to the next position um, so I'll explain to you about the high resistance and the cogging slash benefit that it poses um, it's very, very interesting. So if it's not in this video, it'll be in another. So anyway, there's your quick update. Anyway, quick update. Brand new commutator. Here's the old one. It's in shandles. Um, the spark gap is sparking. You can see it there. And it is connected to this cap, which may or may not be doing anything at all. Um, and we are running. Magnet, two inch magnet inside. Here's the scope shot. Matter of fact, where did the voltage on the cap go? There it is. So the, the voltage on the uh, cap there is that 241 so it's that spark gap is acting as a diode which is interesting let me uh, pause it so you can see okay so the um, yellow trace here is basically the battery level and you can see it doesn't quite come all the way back up but it's got this nice big gap above there this is current going up in the positive being used negative being um, fed back and then this little oomph is to get around the center. But what's most exciting is my multimeter. If it will focus. Focus little meter. I mean camera. So you can see the negative sign quite often. Um, if we go to 
maximum about 1.66 milliamps minimum negative 0.58 and our average is about 41 milliamps I'm sorry 0 0.41 milliamps so our max is 1.75 our minimum is 0 0.58 and our average is 40 42 0.42 milliamps so that's a good sign uh, I am running on all of these batteries and without the flywheel on there you do get a a different result but it's still pretty good um, now I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to pop this guy back into the circuit because it is charging as is as if it has a diode on it in one direction with that spark gap we'll see if it rolls anymore it looks like it's pretty well maxed out there uh, it comes on the screen so it's reading about 220. But it's interesting when you shut it off, it does it does go down. So let's uh I'll switch this. Switch that back and watch it again. Kinda all over the place, huh? So I'm gonna disconnect this. And uh, you can see it, you can see the cap falling down there. It's quite a good little, uh, quite a good little uh, negative dip there. Good battery charge. Anyway, I think actually higher voltage and a bigger flywheel and getting the spark to fire the capacitor when it gets charged, we might have some interesting results, so... God bless. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Today is 9, I mean, 3 9 2018. As you can see on the time. Peace out.